Major, are you there? Yeah, I heard you. I'm surprised you could hear anything. What's with all the noise in your brain today? Must be a loose wire. Cited as an influence on a number of filmmakers, the 1995 release of Ghost in the Shell had a significant impact on cinema, and in particular, the sci-fi genre, the most notable of which was the 1999 film The Matrix. According to legend, when the Wachowskis pitched the idea for The Matrix, they simply played Ghost in the Shell for its entirety and said, we want to do that, but for real. Why is Ghost in the Shell so influential, and why do heavyweight US directors such as Steven Spielberg or James Cameron find significance in a film which flopped on its initial release in Japan. Hey guys, it's Chris back again for another design video. Let's examine the impact that Ghost in the Shell had on the film industry and beyond and delve into the creative process of this classic cyberpunk film. Based on the 1989 manga, by Masamuni Shiro, Ghost in the Shell focuses on the protagonist, Matoko Kusanagi, who is an agent for the cyber terrorist organization Public Security Section 9. Action, stunning visuals, and philosophical questions around what it means to be alive have cemented this film as required viewing, even if you're not familiar with anime. A reference to Ghost in the Machine by Arthur Kessler, this philosophical book examines human consciousness ensuring that the Ghost in the Shell isn't just a typical action film, but one that asks questions around what it is to be human in these digital times. The film opens with Kusanagi in the midst of a mission, a narrative tactic known as In Medias Res, Latin for Into the Middle of Things. Opening the film like this isn't something unique to Ghost in the Shell, but it is an effective way in which the viewer can immediately become engrossed. One of my favourite examples of this technique is Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, when two characters discuss how to continue their career in criminality, only to immediately launch into it over coffee. Another fantastic example is the 2002 City of God, which opens up with a number of gang members chasing a chicken through the favela. You don't have to look too far before you see similarities with other films, in particular The Matrix. Looking at both openings, you can immediately see the similarities between the two films. The green code that represents the digital world. The connections in the back of the characters' heads to connect to a digital interface. The fight scenes. Some shots are uncanny, like this chase scene that involves an explosion of bullets tearing through watermelons being sold on the street. One of the most striking moments is the attention to detail in the vast portrayal of cityscapes, right down to the Hong Kong-esque crowded streets glowing with neon lighting, accompanied by large aircraft flying overhead. In an interview with The Guardian, art director Hiromasa Oguru spoke about working with director Amuro Ushi and how his process differed from what was considered the norm at the time. Usually the projects that would get brought to me are on the basis of stuff I've already done. He would just talk and talk and talk. And it got to the point where I thought, this is really peculiar and this is interesting. It would be worthwhile following through on this just to see what kind of film gets made. Something also particularly different about Oshi's style is his emphasis on building worlds and visuals that transport the user elsewhere. It has often been said that these come first, where characters and story come second to this. Hence the reason Ogura became an integral part of the design process. He would go on to say, The story of Ghost in the Shell goes from this deteriorating urban landscape towards these high-rise buildings. So we had that in mind on what we saw in Hong Kong. We really wanted to capture that feel. Oshi wasn't particularly picky about how it was. 
he'd give it to you in vague terms and let you develop it. This highlights a particularly interesting relationship between director and art director. The director putting his trust in the art director to come up with worlds that best represent his initial vision. From the onset, it was clear then that Ghost in the Shell wasn't just going to be ambitious in its subject matter, but its attention to detail and aesthetics. Ugura's illustrated skylines are still revered to this day, and their popularity after all this time can be attributed to their attention to detail and ability to capture imaginations. What made Ghost in the Shell so influential, and still influential to this day, is having the availability of an incredibly talented team that has creative freedom to deliver their vision. The discussion of ethics involving AI was in its infancy in the late 80s and early 90s. It seems all the more relevant now. The discussion around this subject matter will likely only grow fiercer as technological progress marches on. In that respect, the film is timeless and a true piece of modern cinema history. From the original source material to Oshi's direction, an ability to bring that source material to life, strengthened further by having an amazing team of animators, sound designers, and voice talent. Lightning in a Bottle.